Welcome to Inform TV. I'm Alan Repke, Alexandria, Minnesota. Today we're going to talk about Inform TV. Inform TV is an entity controlled by Alan Repke, owned by Alan Repke. I'm the sole proprietor. Uh, do the lighting, do the filming, do the um, tapes, and uh, uh, we want to kind of introduce ourselves to a new audience it, that we're going to have available to us for charter subscribers in a pretty good slice across the, uh, the state of Minnesota. If uh, the work I've done this week and the agent I have uh, uh, working with them gets things done, I thought I had everything in place and now we've got a couple of rough edges that hopefully are going to be taken in place. So if you have fr friends around Minnesota getting charter in at least in outstate Minnesota and the fringe of the Twin Cities, Inform TV is soon going to be available to you. And yet at the same time, uh, we want you, our new audience, to understand that Inform TV is just that. My goal is to see that you're informed every time you tune in to myself or some of the programming that I'm going to have on Inform TV in an expanded basis. For like our logo, we are the sun. We want to enlighten you and energize you. That is my goal at Inform TV. And with this, I need to expand range. Um, not only through additional cable channels, which seem to be coming available to us. They kind of understand what I'm getting at. Some of you people have been kind enough to uh, um, talk about me a little bit in some circles that, hey, this is a guy that's a clear shooter, that's not afraid to tackle any issue, and has one goal, to see that the public is informed. At a point in time where business seemed to be prospering in an incredible uh, uh, arena, yet the common citizen, the labor force of our society, are struggling to maintain the basic services of life and even maintain a home. And so one of the things this week when I kind of uh, expose to you what I do on a typical day in Inform TV uh, is that you can probably see this. Uh, I'm going to have my own channel now uh, starting very quickly uh, in the Alexandria Lakes area for you people that have cabins and that type of thing on the tower out here in the edge of town at Garfield, which will enable people to tune in 24-7 and see programming that I've been involved with for the last few months as well as some new things. So I'll give you an example. Corn College is going to come there for people that are own a farm involved in agriculture or the general public that is wondering what really goes on in agriculture. Uh, we're in a rural state. Uh, we live in rural America. I think you'll find Corn College uh, very interesting. I'm going to do some state uh, uh, productions that have kind of been pushed off the side, yet they're video programming that I can patch together. Uh, I'm going to offer you uh, some programming from the Fed. Uh, I'm going to work with some different, different, different entities to see that they put some video together. And I'm going to start, I promise, to our community-based uh, uh, subscribers that have been uh, community TV from Sox Center, Alexandria, Fergus Falls, the Fargo-Moorhead, Metro area, Detroit Lakes, uh, Walker, Perm, uh, Wadena, that area. Uh, we're going to still be available to you on, on cable on a particular channel uh, that allows people like me to come on rather than just community channels. And yet at the same time, sell some advertising. I can't do what I've been doing for the last uh, almost five, six months now where I put out programming, but for the most part, I can't advertise. I cannot generate any revenue. And so I work weekends, uh, nights, 12-hour shifts uh, over the weekend to see that I have a little money to live and progress this little project called Inform TV. Uh, but with the help of Selective TV now, we're going to have our first tower, which enables us to see that we can probably beam that to some additional towers. And what I'm doing with some of the smaller cable outlets, uh, if I get my footprint into them, which is quite likely, 
uh, we're soon going to have statewide coverage of a very unique program and a very unique uh, view from myself, a man of great privilege who's been on six continents, uh, was able to uh, uh, lobby our government, both state and federal, in a very successful way, uh, yet be a man of privilege all his life, even when I was enjoying the very best of times or the very worst of times. And that's really what I want to share. And I want to see that the American dream is there for all. As a Christian first, um, the other night I was at uh, uh, Lenten services and a new preacher, my ELCA, my local church that's in disarray, uh, the ELCA that uh, uh, has become a social movement in my view, but uh, I think it's patchable if uh, uh, some of the smart minds that are still going to the church uh, get together and address some of the issues uh, such as marriage, that we indeed are in favor of marriage. Be why? Because we're evangelical church. We're a Bible-based church. The Bible itself, which faith is all about, tells us marriage is between a man and a woman. What more message do we need? What more message do the churches of our society, the Lutherans in our society, need than that message? And yet at the same time, we respect gay rights and from a standpoint of they should have legal rights, but they cannot become one. They cannot marry. Why? Because they cannot become one. It's simply a fact of the good Lord created male and female, and together they become one when they have a child, if they're blessed by a child. But, uh, and they have a unique relationship that no one else can have. Uh, a personal, incredibly uh, fruitful relationship. And so we had a, a, in Firm Form TV, you have to understand, we're not afraid to challenge the issues of the day, but not in the sense that uh, Rush Limbaugh did recently about some young gal that wanted to see she had the right uh, through insurance to get birth control. And the despicable names he called her were not that type of person or personality. Uh, what, what I'm trying to do is to see that the general public knows what's going on in its society. And I think today that is not happening. I've told you about the tower that will soon be available so your friends that get selective TV or then when you come to the cabin here in the Alexandria Lakes area, you'll soon be able to get some very interesting, very unique, very informed programming from us. Yet at the same time, I want to expand it out into the realm where when you come to the Alexandria Lakes area or you have selective TV that you can get baseball. I approached uh, uh, Fox North and have left a message for them. I, as an independent TV company, want to see that uh, Twins Baseball is available to people that have an antenna and grab informed TV. Now, the Twins organization told me, well, you can apply, but you probably won't get it. They're a cable-based deal. And, and I'm asking, and I'm asking you to ask your legislator, why can't this private entity get to be able to broadcast and be able to sell some ad time spots on it so he can cover his cost plus a reasonable living? Isn't that what uh, capitalism is about uh, from Fox North? Do they have to control everything through cable outlets and through premium services? Didn't we, on one our legislatures, involved in seeing that the Twins got a brand new stadium, a, a wonderful entity that many of you, like myself, haven't had the dollars to go see? But I do, as an individual with unique contacts and understanding of the system, even with an incredible low, low uh, income, can provide the people in my community and others in the very near future, Twins Baseball from an antenna. Why aren't you helping Inform TV, Alan Repke, to see that that happens? I want you to contact your legislator. And at the same time, I want to give you an idea of, as I expand into what I would say, and I think anybody, in fact, I talked to a few advertising people, 
wow, the proposed market that you're getting for Alexandria-based businesses or even regional or national bases is query unique and should be very powerful for the people that want to be informed. And isn't that the people that really spend the money, the advertisers? So when I go out though, uh, in the Alexandria Lakes area, uh, and presenting a, a topic that I'm not involved with, Corn College, for example, do you want to advertise on that? Do you want to advertise uh, coming in and, and after Capital Report or a number of the programs that I'll soon have on Informed TV, uh, either in a cable outlet or on my first uh, uh, tower here in the Alexandria Lakes area. But I'm running into, and I bring this up because it, to me, as a person of substance, is the major reason you, the general public, are not being informed on what really is going on. Why uh, the farmers and certain businesses just seem to be enjoying the very best of times, yet you struggle. And the reality is, we have advertisers in the Alexandria Lakes area that say, oh, I, I want to advertise, I like that map, but I'm not going to advertise with a guy like you. You don't follow the rules of society today. I mean, so what are those rules of society? Well, uh, uh, sir, do you think the Keystone Pipeline should be put in the ground like some of the programming we had at the Senate Station here in Alexandria? Well, of course it should be put in the ground. Well, why don't you see that the public is informed on what's going on? Uh, that, that's not my business. I don't want to upset anybody. I want all the Republicans, I want all the Democrats to come in my, my business and, and buy from me. And we, we, we belong to an entity here in the, the business district that we're in that where we do some advertising, where we could do, do some advertising with. There's some national companies and they certainly are not going to allow any of their advertising uh, dollars to go to an entity that opens the books, uncovers what's under the rug, or lift up the copy of the desk and show you, the general public, their customers, what's really going on. And I obviously try to report back to them, if you want a good business climate, shouldn't your com customers ma be making money? Now, for example, I'll give you that uh, suddenly, McDonald's now is suddenly not uh, in the news on CNBC today, was saying their profits didn't come through as scheduled. Why? It's very simply. Uh, the cost of beef has been going up steady, steady, steady. And that's why I want you people to tune in and listen to some of the issues when I talk about agriculture, because agriculture is the true microcosm of our society that we all must understand. And if we look at that, we truly understand what's going on and what our policy people, what our elected officials people need to do. And the other reason I want you to fight for some advertising dollars with the restaurants, with the businesses, with the business you work at, to see that Inform TV prospers and they are allowed to put their message on is the fact that unless that happens, we're not going to get the changes we need in our society to rebuild our economy so all share in the value. And when I look at that, I want to give you an example of another example of what I face as an independent TV producer that's starting to cover a pretty good size market area and have access to you, the general public that are struggling to figure out what is really going on in society, what is really happening. And today, uh, because of the fact that I'm in Form TV, because I'm in a number of markets in outstate Minnesota and include the Fargo-Moorhead metro area, I suddenly have access to government agencies that have to inform me when they're going to have a press conference or a, uh, a news conference like the Secretary of Agriculture did over the phone. And I, as a person of substance, have a right to ask our leaders questions. Now, unfortunately today, the question I have for the Secretary of Agriculture, one of the things I have to be careful about is they want to look me at just a blogger or uh, uh, the guy out in the left field that doesn't know anything what's going on in society. And unless I ask a question at the appropriate time in the 
property environment, boom, I'm taking off the ability to ask questions that should be asked today on the agenda of what's going on rather than the agenda of a uh, cabinet secretary or a congressman or a local governor or a Congress, our, uh, House or legislative member. And today they were talking about CRP. Now many people um, that hunt CRP has been a godsend to the pheasants, the deer, to ducks, to wildlife in general. And, and uh, if I can scrape some advertising money, I want to show you some of the things with the Legacy Fund that's happening locally that I guarantee you, you'll find very interesting. Yet at the same time, I have some questions to that board that handles that and some examples of what happened here in Alexandria that should be on the committee hearings with the Legacy Fund at the Capitol as well as the board for sure that handled those funds. And I can show you and I can show them on Inform TV here. And at the same time, I have Chevy Volt info that suddenly here as gas prices is going up, why should you watch Inform TV? Here, the Chevy Volt, that is an incredible solution, the only real solution to, to uh, uh, people, all of us that drive uh, cars and trucks, to bring the price of gasoline down. What did we hear this past week? That the Volt production is actually slowing down. When I want you and the President of the United States to view a program that I have where I toured the Alexandria Lakes area with a local Chevy dealer and one of his salesmen uh, at 205 miles per gallon. And I think, and I've tried to tell, in fact, I've uh, talked to some of the local area Chevy dealers, and maybe you could talk to them as well, that I know how to sell the Chevy Volt. They don't, and they've proved it. I've been in contact with those people for a number of months and trying to tell them, you don't know how to sell the Chevy Volt. You have to do it the way Inform TV does it. And the president cannot get before the general public when gasoline is a major issue and going up and up and up, what, almost 30 days in a row, and say, I'm going to buy a Chevy Volt when I'm no longer president five years from now. Mr. President, the Chevy Volt is here and ready to serve the general public in a mind-boggling way right now, and the Fortune 500 corporation should be forced to buy a, a minimum of a thousand vehicles immediately and share them with all their employees so the general public in Minnesota, can, in the nation, can see what I was able to see by asking the local Chevy dealer and get Corey, the local salesman, to ride on the route that I picked and I sold him on the value of the Chevy Volt. Just like I'll sell you, just like I'll sell the president, just like I'll sell the nation. It's a vehicle that needs to be used. But yet at the same time, I want to get you to understand of what I, I talked about when I called in to listen to the secretary's speech. He talked about CRP today and uh, our, a new program in the CRP end. And I had my question about what's going on with farm policy and he didn't get to kind of an opening for me to come in when he told the reporter, the, I think the last reporter, that he's going to maintain 30 million acres of CRP. People, he's going to have to triple and quadruple uh, the CRP rent rates if he's going to do that. I don't think he can do that. I think uh, enough has already come out or programmed to come out or already rented to a farmer that he's not going to be able to do that. And it was a slight opening for me to bring up a couple questions, but boom, it was over. But here's a question I want to present to you, my audience, and for you to talk to your congressman and senator uh, about farm policy. And what I'm getting at this week is the fact that what are we hearing in farm country here in rural America? that we're all aware of. We all know some farmers, we all know some landowners, we have family that own uh, farmland, farmland uh, uh, that from the farm crisis uh, of 85, obviously values came down in a very steep valley in, in uh, uh, the 85 to 86, 87 area. Uh, Warren Buffett talks about the farmland he bought in that period. Now, 
we have farmland that's sold for $800 an acre and you all had an opportunity to buy some farmland in that period for about that $800 an acre. Now suddenly that land is selling for $8,000 an acre, renting for triple what it used to rent for, and uh, uh, suddenly the farmer is telling the Senate and House Ag Committee, the farm groups are telling him, Farmers Union, Farm Bureau, the corn growers, the soybean growers, the wheat growers, that they'll forego a fixed payment of about $20 an acre nationwide, in that range anyway. And it's about a $5 billion benefit that they've been receiving since 1996. Good prices are bad. They've uh, been fortunate enough, their balance sheet has went way up, their income has went way up. But here is the question that I wanted to present to the Secretary, and I'm going to try to throw it in a editorial, or letter to, to the editor, uh, to put in some Minnesota papers to see if it catches any traction there, or if the Secretary calls another news conference when he actually talks about uh, a farm policy. Here was my question to the, pre uh, to the Secretary of Agriculture. Mr. Secretary, will you disclose to the American taxpayer and Congress why farm groups are willing to forego about five billion dollars per year in fixed annual payments in exchange for a highly subsidized USDA crop revenue insurance. And here's the point people, which if corn, soybeans, and wheat, and some of the other grain crops, if prices had dropped by 50% in 2000, on the 2011 crop, or on the 2012 crop that'll soon be planted, the taxpayer cost on that crop insurance would be about $40 billion. Yes, you heard me right. They're willing to give up $5 billion to have protection of $40 billion. But here's another reason why. Yet if this direct program that's been under the books for the since basically since 96 and renewed in just 2000, the summer of 2008, less than four years ago, if that same direct subsidy program that these farm groups and your neighbor uh, farmer there is willing to let go, that particular program that is billed as a support program and did bring big uh, supports up to $32 billion uh, in the late 90s to American farmers, under that same 50% drop that if we would have had it on the 2011 crop, or we could have it if a big crop, now hear this, if we have a big crop in 2012 and prices crash, like historically they did, when you get a big crop, that program that they're willing to give up, now listen to this, they could have a 50% drop in prices on a bumper crop, and they would take in from highly subsidized revenue crop insurance about $40 billion. But if they were protected just by the traditional farm policy that was renewed in the summer of 2008, do you realize that same 50% drop in prices, they would basically receive nothing additional than that fixed 20 some dollars an acre payment. Just think of that. And these are numbers that come from the risk management agency that manages federal crop insurance. And yet at the same time, people, I want you to understand that about three years ago, I sent a email to some of the people I knew in the farm service agency offices that every county has, that I told them that they could save the taxpayer from two to three billion dollars easy per, per, per year, plus they could actually make it a profit center for the U.S. taxpayer. And the people that I sent that to sent it to their union heads and that type of thing that let 
with the help of computers and government employees, they could run the federal crop insurance program way cheaper than business. And yet, the employees came back to their union, well, we don't want to make crop insurance people mad, and let's just leave it the way it is. Yet the reality is, now they paid uh, Sparks Commodities, which is now Informa, a big fee to come up with the same number, about a two and a half billion dollar per year saving, if these local agencies, uh, farm service agencies, would just manage crop insurance themselves. Forget about the companies, forget about these uh, local agents that have come out like bandits uh, serving this policy. They just use government data anyway that the farmer gives the government every year. And just think of that. But they didn't have to spend a big fee. They could have just asked me. And so when we look at Inform TV and we talk about what I do here on a weekly basis, if you can help me get some advertising dollars from your local business, from your regional business, from the employer that you work for, and the politicians you know that to see that we have an opportunity to tell you what's going on in the world, this place will be a much better place. And in a future program, I'm going to show you what our University of Minnesota totally denied me of letting one of their tax experts as well as their one of their agronomy experts to come in and let me interview them. So talk to your state legislator and or your University of Minnesota uh, contact. Why isn't Alan Repke at Inform TV allowed to interview a tax expert from the University of Minnesota as well as an agronomy expert? that relates to a number of things, the price of food, the price of fertilizer, and cellulosic ethanol. I want to thank you for tuning in to Inform TV as we expand our market. Thank you. I'm Alan Repke, Alexandria, Minnesota.